Welcome to our review on designer polymers. So what we need to remember then is when we're thinking about polymers, different polymers have different properties. And what we'll find is that we're going to select certain polymers for certain jobs based on those properties. So in the table there, I've given you some information about two different polymers, LDPE and HDPE. So if we look at the LDPE, then if we were looking to decide what would be the best one to use to make carrier bags, LDP would be our choice. Because if you look at its flexibility, it's flexible. So if you imagine going to the shop and needing to put lots of different shaped items into a container, having something that's flexible is better. If however we wanted to make some garden furniture for example, having it flexible would be terrible because as soon as you sat on it, it would just collapse. Now, what we use then is HDPE because it's a very stiff material. So when you get one of these questions asking you what material you use for a certain job, think about what it has to do. Then match the information in the table there to that particular purpose and talk about those advantages. One polymer that you've almost certainly encountered in your everyday life is polystyrene. So we use polystyrene in protective packaging and as insulation. So what we actually find there is if you've got one of these new build houses, then under the main part of your house, under the big body of the floor there, you will have giant chunks of polystyrene to act as insulation for your home. We've also got a couple of other polymers, nylon and polyester, and those are fibers that we use to make different types of clothing. If we consider why polymers have these different properties, then what we're looking at are how they're actually attracted and linked. So in the diagram there, you can see we've got these different polymer molecules, basically looking like they're just sitting on top of each other. Now, what's gonna happen there is each of those polymer molecules will be attracted to each other by weak intermolecular forces. Now, because these are weak intermolecular forces, then they're very easily overcome. So we don't have to put much heat in in order to overcome those forces. As a result of that, they've got a low melting point. We'll also find that these are the kind of plastics that you can stretch easily, because as you can see, if you just pull on the ends of those molecules, they're gonna be able to slide over each other very easily because there's nothing holding them in place. So when you see a diagram like this, then what we're looking at are weak intermolecular forces, giving it a low melting point, and they're easily stretched because the molecules can slide over each other. The second type of polymer that we'll see has got a different structure. So if you look at the diagram there, you can see it almost looks like a brick wall. And the reason behind that is because we've got strong covalent bonds forming crosslinks between the individual polymer molecules. So because we've got these crosslinks, it means that if you pull on the ends, then the molecules can't slide past each other. So because of that, then they're not going to stretch easily and they're going to have a very rigid shape. In addition to that, because we've got strong covalent bonds between them, then that means in order to actually break those bonds, we need to put a lot of energy into it. If we need to put a lot of energy into something, then that gives it a high melting point. We use polymers in our clothing and we need to know about two key terms associated with polymer clothing. The first one is the word waterproof. So if we're talking about waterproof clothing, we're referring to a type of clothing that's going to stop water getting in when it rains, but it does not allow the sweat from our bodies to get out. If we compare that to the phrase breathable clothing, then that's going to stop water getting in as it rains and it also lets sweat out, hence breathable. So breathable clothing is better than waterproof clothing because it does allow the sweat out. I've got two different types of polymers at the bottom there for you to compare. So on the left hand side we've got nylon, so that's waterproof, it's tough, it's lightweight and it blocks the UV light. And on the right we've got Gore-Tex which is waterproof, breathable, tough, lightweight and blocks the UV light. So if you're thinking about the best outdoor clothing to wear, then Gore-Tex would be the choice because in addition to the properties that they both share, 
it is also breathable so that means that you're not going to have that unpleasant sweaty feeling building up if you're wearing those clothes outside and doing any form of exercise. The way that we actually make this breathable material is by building up a stack of layers. So what we've actually got in the diagram on the right there, it shows you the actual construction. So on the outside, we've got this outer fabric that's going to obviously repel that rainwater, but still allow sweat through. In the middle, we've got a PTFE layer. And on the very bottom there, we've got our inner lining. So what we actually find is if we look at that PTFE layer, then we've got lots and lots of tiny holes. Now, those holes are too small for water droplets to pass through, but they're big enough for water vapor. So that means the sweat that's evaporating from our skin is in the form of a vapor. That means that the droplets are more spaced out in that vapor form, so they're going to be able to pass through those tiny holes. Whereas the rain water, which obviously is falling as droplets of liquid, those will be too big to pass through the holes to our skin. So it keeps it dry on the inside and allows the sweat to pass out. The downside is that PTFE is a very fragile material, hence why we laminate it. So we coat it with this nylon on the outside there in order to actually make it that little bit tougher so it doesn't tear and break easily.